right, let's walk out here and look at the water. The water's a little bit high. We had a big rain the other day, a couple days back. And the water's a little bit cloudy, but that's okay. I'm gonna start off with a tiny fluke made by Zoom with a 1 16th of an ounce jig head, six pound test floor carbon line, and that jig head's tied with a loop knot. My braid is a uh, eight pound test braid, and I have it uh, connected with a double uni knot. A six and a half foot light action sow belly rod, and a Daiwa Fago 2000 size. That's all we're gonna be doing. Now this tail I've dyed right here with spike it, sharp true spike it. The reason for that, well, there's a lot of yellowtails coming towards the dam right now. Uh, they have been spawning, the spawn is over. And when that happens on these dams on the Tennessee River, they'll migrate to the dam. And what's going to follow? There's no telling. All species eat yellowtails. I'm going to tell you, I have caught every species in the world with that bait right there. Anything that swims, I hit it, folks. And I, I tell you, there's, a, there's several different baits that I like to use, but this one has got to be my favorite. And I believe a 1 16th of an ounce jig head is going to be perfect. But I'm just going to make a short cast right here. Now, this water is about 15 feet deep on this side of Gunnersville Dam. 14 to 15 feet deep, a short cast. Once it hits the bottom, I'm going to just snap it up. Snap it up. Let it hit. Oh, I just got a bite right there. I sure did. First cast. We'll figure out what that was. A lot of rocks out here. What I'm doing is letting it, when it makes bottom contact, snapping it up about a foot. See, I got a bite right there. What do I, my goodness. What was I saying? Yeah, there, it's a rocky bottom. Right in behind those rocks on the down current side is where your fish is going to be. There's a fish. I got him. Let's see what we got. It's a good bass. Darn good bass. But that's not what I missed a while ago, folks. I believe it was white bass. Even though the water is dingy, they're accustomed to that yellow tail. Dying that tail is the secret. That's a good fish for light line. Come back here. Oh, he's got caught up in a line right there. My goodness, somebody throwed a bunch of junk in there. Why do they do that? That's a good spot, and am I going to get him? <laughs> Why in the world? I'm going to get that. Look at that. Well, ain't that a handsome catch. But timing is everything. Everything when it comes to fishing. That's ridiculous right there, folks. That's not a bad fish at all, folks. Let me get down here where y'all see. That's a good fish on a tiny bait like that. But see, they're accustomed. They're accustomed. Accustomed. Hitting small baits like that. Because really, a three, three and a half inch yellow tail. Or three fin shad actually is the right name. Uh, for that bait fish. Is... A normal size, so they're they're used to that. But let's let him go. Nice spotted bass. Uh, I'm going to hobble over here, and we're going to catch another one. Well, he hadn't been out of the water long at all. There he goes. Water's getting hot now. 
I should have revived that fish a little bit better than that, but he'll be fine. Spotted bass are tough. I want y'all to look at that. My, my, my. Keeping up with your bait's real important. How they move in these rivers and lakes. And it's important. But now the water is high here on the river a little bit. So most of the fish is going to be close to us. In other words, where those rocks end and then falls off in the deep water, that's where most of the fish are going to be. Now, I did have two strikes out here, a pretty good cast, a way probably old 50 or 60 foot cast out there in about 14 feet of water, but I believe those were white bass. You know, we'll find out here in a little bit. But there's a current seam, if y'all can tell, from about that biggest tree right there in front of it back this way if you'll look at the waves you can actually see the seam see the white on the top of the water that is the seam and this way the seam about 15 or 20 feet from that point to the bank is going to be your high percentage area that's the kind of areas that I look for walking down through here hey can y'all see that bird he's a long ways away but he's hunting he's trying to say come over here and fish here too man he knows what he's doing there's a fish what do we got right here well i'll be doggone the way you hit it, I thought it was a bass. That little crappie knocked the fire out of that, folks. On the bottom. I do this a lot here at the dam. These fish act a lot different than normal crappie. I mean, he picked it up off the bottom. Ain't that something? You never know what you're going to catch fishing this way. And let me add this. That fish was behind a rock on the down current side. <laughs> Ain't that something? I mean, he smacked it. And they will. In this, in this current like this, these river crappie, they hit a lot harder. And they position themselves a lot different than a crappie in a lake gonna take it a little while to hit the bottom okay it's on the bottom now just pick it up and let it fall back now i'm not picking it up but about a foot at a time and then snapping it back just little bitty movements right there is where i caught that bass and the reason why is there's some rocks right here right out in there big cluster of rocks I almost got hung up right then so i'm snapping it off the rock and letting it fall back behind it that's what we're doing right now and a sixteenth of an ounce is about perfect one sixteenth of an ounce is about perfect right here because it's going about current speed they'll lay in behind those rocks and they'll face the current the current's coming this way going this way they're right in behind those rocks, waiting for something to come by. There's a fish. That's a good one. Oh, me, come up twice, folks. Did y'all see that? That's a good one right here. For this light tackle, he's running down the bank. I guess that's probably going to be a smallmouth. And a good smallmouth. In this type of current, he's he's just, uh, I can't turn him. Smallmouth bass has got a lot of power. There he comes. Uh, it may not be a smallmouth, it may be a largemouth. But the way he double jumped right there reminds me so much of a smallmouth. 
It's a doggone large mouth. They're just so spunky in this current. That fish right there fooled me. I guarantee you. Quit now. You're done. You're done. You're done. He's all wrapped up. That was a hard pulling fish. No doubt. Golly, look how far he got that that bait down there. Can y'all see that? He choked it. I guess that's today's terms by these young ones, but back in my day, we just said, well, he eat it. That ain't too bad of a fish. But I'm gonna tell you what, each and every individual fish fights different. That bass right there fall. Uh, they're kind of like humans, you know. You have small, strong humans, and you have big, weak ones. But that fish right there, I just knew we had a small mouth. But river largemouth, they do have a lot of power. And that was a lot of fun. I guarantee you. Matching the hatch is what I'm doing once again. Just let him go right here. Well, there he goes. Y'all can't see him. This water's cloudy. Cloudy. But as you can see, as y'all can see, a natural bait with a little sharp truce on the tail got it done. And the reason why is I believe this ain't the first time that I've done this. Yeah. The reason is they're used to that yellow tail from a thread fin shad. Uh, that's the only sense I can make out of it because this water is dingy. When it hits the bottom, I'm wanting it to bounce over the top, of the very top of the rock, and then let that bait fall right behind the rock because those fish are in behind those rocks facing the current. And what it does, it causes a reflexive type bite. Just like if I were to throw a ball to you, you'll reach and grab it without thinking. You won't even get, I mean, you'll just reach without even thinking. Well, that's what this bait's doing. So, and, and it just, and it being small like this don't make any difference. If there's a five or six pound bass, or whatever species is behind that rock and he wants to feed on the shad and all of a sudden it follows in front of him he's either going to get it or he's not but oftentimes it creates a reflexive action type strike and that's why this method is so uh, and i missed him right there it's so effective that was probably a little white bass one of the most effective ways I know of to catch these fish on the river. And uh, there's a lot of different bait types you could use, of course, as y'all know. But I prefer a small one in current like this. A small bait, three, three and a half inches long. Um, and in a, if I can, I want to use a one sixteenth of an ounce, nothing much heavier than that jig head I get more bites like that with a smaller jig head and I don't get hung up as bad and lose as many baits but now remember this is all my opinion there's one my goodness this is another pretty good fish I ain't big as I thought he was. But golly, they pull. On this type of tackle, that sinking braid, if I'm not mistaken, folks, is a little bit smaller in diameter than the than just regular braid. <laughs> Plus it sinks. It's just, 
it makes a big, big difference. Big difference. But there's a, he's long, but he's sort of skinny. But we got him buttoned up just right, right there, right in the mouth. Right in the mouth. All right, let's let him go. Go on back. There he goes. Now, this technique right here will work across the board. I don't care. Kind of like Rowan Martin says, all the way from California to Connecticut. It doesn't matter. Uh, anytime you have current, this is a great way to catch bass or other species, whatever's positioned behind the rock facing the current there's a long ways right here along this rip route to fish but there's just four or five specific places in casting range from the bank that has the right rocks and big enough rocks to actually hold fish what they're doing is they're getting behind the rock okay here's the rock they're getting on the down current current's going this way behind the rock to get out of the current and they're facing into the current what they're doing is resting they're also set up for ambush bass or ambush predators anything that comes over that rock or if a school of shad comes over that rock they're set up in a perfect way to make a decision to either eat or not eat well, that's the same thing with this jig, what I'm doing right here. And the reason why I like this tiny, tiny fluke made by Zoom is because it's streamlined. And a streamlined bait does a lot better in current than a big bulky bait. So that's the reason why I like that bait right there. It, it does real well in current. And um, of course, the main thing I'm trying to do is work the bait to the rock and over and then let it fall. That fish is gonna do one or two things. He's gonna ignore it and let it go by. Or when that bait falls in his strike zone, he's gonna make a decision. And it's a split second decision. It's a reflexive action type strike. Um, so, what I mean by that, it's the same if I was to take this line and throw it to you, just throw it to you without thinking you're going to catch it or you're going to throw your arm up to deflect it. And that's the reason why you can catch big bass with tiny baits around these downs. They don't care. It's just a reflexive type strike. If that bait goes by a five or six, seven pound bass in front of him just right, he'll inhale it like that. This is where big bait, big fish, myth, well, it don't work here. It has nothing to do with what we're doing today. Now, if you can see this jig, how straight it is. See how straight it is? There's no bulk here behind the head. It's just like if it came out of the pack, folks. How I do that and why is very important. And let me show you what I mean. All right, here's a bunch of them that I've modified right here in this pack. Now these are 1 16th of an ounce, my favorite size to use. If I can use them, I will. I try not to use an eighth. I stay hung up all the time. Like I mentioned, a one sixteenth to go over those rocks a lot better. But you're still going to lose a few. If it washes up under a rock on the upcurrent side and goes under it where it's concaved, you're going to lose them every once in a while. But now what I do is just like my crappie jigs. All the jigs that I use, jig heads, I'll cut the collar off in behind the head and I'll wrap it with dental floss. 
you need to get the type of dental floss that don't have wax on it. Then when I, excuse me, when I rigged the bait right there, I'll rig it perfectly straight or straight as I can. I'll pull the plat. Now this one's glued, so I can't pull it, but I'll pull the plastic back and I'll glue it with Loctite. Glue the super glue right here up and down it then i'll run the bait back now the reason i do that is to keep the bait streamlined just like it came out of the pack if you don't do that what will happen behind this head where the lead used to be before i cut it off with side cutters it'll bulk it up right here and it'll give it an awful action you'll get more bites this way when it falls in behind the rock, it'll fall straight in a natural way. And you'll get more bites. I promise you, you'll get more bites. Now, it takes a little time to rig them up like that, but it's worth it. It's fishing. It's a sport second to none, folks. Another reason why I do that, I do not want to be hassled with a bait constant when I catch a fish or if I miss a fish the bait being way down here, slipping. I do not like that slipping stuff. I'm not gonna have it. I mean, you'll catch most of the fish that bites by doing that. If, if, a, if a bait slips down, you'll miss a lot of them because of that, because the plastic's almost covering up your hook point. So that's the reason why I go through a lot of extra when it comes to my fishing. I want it to be just as high percentage as possible. And bank fishing, well, it's second to none. You have more control from the bank than you do by bow. Hey. Whoa! Oh, another thing I get a lot of questions about. What do you dye the tails with? Now what I'm doing is trying to make this bait look just as much like a, a thread fin shad, commonly called uh, yellowtails, which yellowtail is not the right name for them. It is thread fin shad. I use spike it for the tail. I just dip it in there. Be careful with this stuff. It'll get all over you and it stinks, especially this one. It's garlic scented. Shoo wee, it stinks. Whoa, it stinks. A special shout out to the whole Hodge family, excuse me, from North Carolina. Amy, Danny, Lincoln, Bridget, and Dalton. I appreciate this hat. It's got everything in the world on it. You can survive out in the middle of the desert with all the band-aids. Uh, aspirins and all that kind of stuff on it. I appreciate it very much and appreciate y'all and love y'all. And I want to say God bless each and every one of y'all. Thank y'all for everything y'all do for this channel and whoa here comes a truck but I don't care whoa and it remember Go fishing when you can, because it's good for you.